Friends, what a strange and unsettling storm we are living through. Our lives have become a seesaw between physical isolation and online overload. And we come to this year's Easter festivals having been tested in unprecedented ways. What might we draw then from the first Easter that can sustain us and renew us now? Well, I want to offer you the name of Mary of Magdala. The first to see the resurrected Jesus at Easter dawn was Mary. She was the first to see him and the first to recognize him. And she was the first to be named by him and the first to be sent by him. So Mary rightly is the first apostle, the one called and sent to proclaim Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Yet all of this happened quietly and away from the public gaze that had marked the suffering and death of the world's saviour. Jesus did not return to his people in a blaze of publicity, but quietly, gently, personally. He called Mary by name. It is worth honouring Mary of Magdalene at this strange and disorienting Easter of 2020, when none of our customary ways of making these great days wonderful. For the tender meeting of Jesus with Mary, we have a sign of how we might make our own way through these days of struggling. Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead so as to show the world something marvellous or clever. His rising instead showed that suffering and death would no longer be the last word. Rather, that first word spoken by Jesus to Mary and then repeated through the generations is a name, a name bearing hope and life for each whose name is now called. Easter is a word that has recreated the world. Christians have not been able to gather physically to participate in the Easter ceremonies this year. Friends and families have not been free to socialise together. No shared leisure, no common activities, no sport. There are no public ways to mark this religious festival. Yet, that first word Jesus spoke at his resurrection, a name on the lips of God, he is now speaking into the storm that has engulfed us. Overwhelmed, disoriented, and even fearful as we might feel, a calm, clear, and tender voice is calling our name. It is not a voice to magically whisk us away to comfort and security, nor a voice that pretends there is no storm to ride through. It is rather the voice of the risen one who has known suffering and death and has tamed their power to overwhelm us. He stands with each of us so that we need not stand alone. He calls to each of us so that we have a sure compass point and he walks with each of us to show the way. Death does not have the last word any longer. Even though its threat remains, our lives, held in the heart of God and carried through death to life by his Son, have not been forgotten. We are remembered by God. He calls each of us by name. And as Jesus is calling us, he's also sending us to speak words of care and support and comfort into the lives of those around us and into our home church. He is the voice that speaks through those who are close to us at this time. Our children who we're caring for, our leaders protecting the whole country, our healthcare workers serving in danger, our spouses and loved ones. So as we remember Easter this year and that first word of the risen Jesus, let us remember it was a name, Mary. May we hear our own names echo in that call. Let us hold on to this anchor in the storm we are currently living through. And to borrow a colloquial phrase, Christ has our back and he will be 
with us all the way. Happy Easter.